In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create interactive prototypes without ever leaving Figma. In Figma, you can create interactive flows in prototype mode and share your prototypes easily with a presentation view. Used together, these features are great for design critiques or presenting to clients. Once our design's complete, we can head to the presentation view. In the top right, select the play button icon and another tab will open up. Here, we're taken to the first frame of our document. This frame is determined by the order in which your frames are arranged. If we head back to our document, you'll see that this blue frame is the top leftmost frame in our document. Presentation view then looks from left to right until it finds the next frame before moving on to the next line. And we'll continue that way from left to right until it completes each line in the document. You'll see this order reflected as we move through our documents in presentation view. Now in presentation view, we can hit the left and right keys on our keyboard to change which frame we're looking at. This makes it easy to show off our design for both design review and client presentation. In addition to showing off static frames in presentation view, we can also enter prototyping mode and create real connections and hotspots between frames to give your presentation a bit of interactivity. To do that, let's head to the top right and select prototype. We've now entered prototyping mode. When we select a frame, you can see that we're now given a blue circular node in the middle of our frame. If we click and drag on this node, you'll notice a connection has started to be made. If we drag this connection to another frame, Figma will snap onto that frame, and as we let go, it'll create a connection between those frames. This connection enables a hotspot on this entire frame. In addition, you'll also notice a blue box with a white arrow in the top left of our first connected frame. This indicates the starting point of our presentation. You can click and drag and move this arrow to any frame that you would like to indicate a new starting position. I'm going to keep this on the profile frame as it's a great place to start off. Now that we have a hotspot on the profile frame, let's head back to our presentation view. Now you'll notice when we click on this frame, it now takes us to the very frame it's connected to. Now let's take this connection one step further by making a connection on an object rather than a frame. Let's head back to our document and let's remove this connection. We can do so simply by grabbing the arrow and pulling it off of the frame it's connected to. First, let's zoom in a little bit and select this object, Rain Downtown. In the application, this should be a link to an audio sample and should take you to the recording frame. So what we wanna do is first select our object. This will give us a node on the object itself. From there, we can click and drag that node onto our recording frame. Now, let's head back to the presentation view and see this connection in action. From here, we can click on our frame once more. However, you'll notice nothing happened except for a blue flash on the rain object. When we select something that's not linked, it's going to indicate what hotspots are available. That way you can see what's clickable and what's not easily at a glance. So let's go ahead and click on the rain downtown. This now takes us to the rain recording. However, the rain recording isn't connected to anything, so we can't go any further than this. Now let's head back to our document. I'm going to select the play button icon and connect it to the next frame. And now I'm going to select the stop button icon and connect it back to the previous frame. This is going to allow us to quickly move between documents using only hotspots. Let's head back to our presentation view and you'll see that this is updated without us having to even refresh the page. We can select the play button, select the stop button, and it'll take us back and forth. However, from here, we would like the X button to go back to the original frame. Let's take this one step further and show off some power features of Figma using components. Let's head back to our document. Now if we head to the profile frame, we'll notice that this top area is actually a component. Let's go ahead and move the master component outside of this frame and then create an instance of this component to show off how we can use components in prototyping mode. Let's drag this up. I'm going to hold option and drag a new copy of this down onto the frame. Now with the component here, 
we can come into our group, which is the X button. From the node here, I can click and drag and make a connection to the profile frame. This is going to make a connection on every instance of this component. So let's head back to our prototype and see this in action. From here, even though we didn't make a connection between this specific object and the first frame, you'll notice because it's an instance of this component, the hotspot is still going to work as intended. We can click that X and it's going to take us back to the profile frame. So we can click through our document once more and you'll notice every instance of that X has that connection already made. In addition to prototyping mode, we also have some features that make presentation view very powerful. For instance, let's say this background color isn't fitting for the design we're trying to show off. Well, if we head back to our document, as long as nothing is selected on our canvas, you'll see that we have the option to now change our prototype background. If we were to make this white and tab back over to our presentation, you'll now see the presentations presented on an all white background. This way you can easily complement your design with the background of your presentation view. I preferred the gray, so I'm going to change that back. In addition, there's also some great features for sharing and commenting on your design. To get a link to share, we can head to share prototype in the top right. From here, we simply just need to click copy shareable link and the link is now copied to our clipboard. I'm going to open this up as another user who's viewing this design. Here we can see our design side by side. The one on the right is the link that was shared. You'll notice the new viewer can click between and navigate through the hotspots just as you would. In addition, they can also leave comments on your design. From here, anyone with access to the document can leave a comment. Simply by selecting the comment bubble, we're now able to place a comment anywhere we would like to. For instance, this icon should be clickable. And now, anyone with access can see these comments. In addition to, you can comment on or resolve them. Now, if you'd like to see all of the comments, in addition to the ones that are unresolved, we just have to head up to the I in the top right, select that, and select Show Resolved Comments. From here, you can see we have a comment that is grayed out. This is one that's been resolved that we can select and see the conversation that took place, continue the conversation, or mark this as unresolved. In addition to comments, we also have observation mode. Observation mode makes it extremely simple for someone to lead a presentation and have others follow along. To enter observation mode, as a viewer of this document, we simply just need to select the avatar of the person we would like to observe. By selecting that avatar, you can see that the view between the two documents is now totally in sync. As the leader of the presentation navigates through the document, you not only see their cursor, but you also see their actions. When they select the hotspot and take you to the next frame, everyone sees these actions in real time, making it extremely easy for someone to lead a presentation for many. As you can see, you can give excellent client presentations and design reviews using prototype mode presentation view, and observation mode in Figma. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Figma's developer handoff feature so that you can share your documents with developers and other members of your team and still allow them to see vital pieces of information about your design without making them an editor. Typically, when working with developers, you'll want them to see very specific specs about your design, such as colors, spacing, and various typography rules. Let's pretend I'm sharing this document with a developer. When I click share in the top right, I can see that the permissions are such that anyone with the link can view the contents. I can also manually enter the email address of my developer and give them view permissions. And here, I've opened up this document in another account. You'll notice that this user has access to a view only version of this document where they can get all sorts of information about your styles. As you can see, we have access to all of our layers. We can even click around. Let's zoom in on one of these frames and get a closer look. You can see that when selecting various items on our frame, we get all sorts of important information about that item. And with one object selected, we can hover the frame to get important spacing information or even hover over another object to get spacing information between the two, right on the screen with our red lines. 
Now what I can't do in this view is modify the design. I'm not able to drag, move, delete, or add to the design in any way. In addition, we also get some important property information in the right hand column. Let's go ahead and select this text that says rain to see what I mean. When we've selected rain, you can see that we now see important information in the right hand column, such as position coordinates, as well as all of our font information from the font family, the font style, font size, and line height. We're even getting some color information, such as the fill hex value. If you're viewing this file as an editor, you'll see the same information in the code tab. Now this view is initially how the properties are displayed. However, let's say we wanted to see some real CSS code. Now all we have to do is come up here to the top right, we can select the brackets with the word code. Upon selecting that, you can see that we have access to real CSS code. Now this code is meant to be used as a reference, so you don't want to necessarily copy and paste directly out of here, but it is a quick way to grab specific properties, such as color, font size, and font family. In addition to real CSS code, we also have access to a couple of other types. If we select this dropdown, we can choose iOS, where we get real Swift code, or select Android, here you can see we have our text view along with a styles.xml. Again, this is meant to be used as a reference but can be a major time saver. Now in addition to seeing all of our properties, we also have access to exporting. Let's go ahead and export this play button icon. We can select our play button, make sure we have everything selected correctly in our layers, and then come to the right. From here I can select SVG from the drop down and click export subtract. This is going to export us a real SVG icon that the developer will be able to use directly in their code. And since this is a view only copy, these exports won't exist if the user reloads their document. As you can see here, after reloading, we no longer have our export. So these export settings are simply temporary. However, any export settings created by an editor will persist. As you can see, with the developer handoff mode, developers have access to a view-only copy of your document where they can get all of the information they need without having to pay for another editor on the team, saving you money and increasing productivity.